to episode two of the X Power podcast. I'm your host Martin McCurdy, and today I'm joined by uh, former Criterion developer and friend of the show Ryan Brain. How you doing, Ryan? Hello there. I'm alright, <coughs> thanks. How are you? All right. Now, I, I said former uh, Criterion developer. Uh, you tell us what what are you up to now, mate? Uh, so right now I'm working for a small. Uh, studio based in Norton Keynes called DR Studios. Um, yeah. It's a 505 games company uh, and I'm the principal technical designer over there. Right, awesome, awesome. So, what are you working on right now, mate? <clears throat> Uh, nothing you, uh, has been announced. So I can, nothing has so been announced. Talk about it, unfortunately. <laughs> what, what, what was your last game that, that you, you know if, if you want to talk about? Uh, the last game well, like, you, that on. you've released or. Yeah, yeah. The, the last game I worked on that was for that was for Criterion. That was yep. Battlefield Five Firestorm. Right, 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 right. So this what, what you that's not announced. Uh, that this is be your first game you're working on, and your new job. Yeah, that's right. Right, yeah. right, uh, right. I've right. been with DR you know, for yeah, about a yeah, year now, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're nice working on what we're working on. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Uh, so, uh, but, but guys, if you want to have a look at, um, so it was DDR. Uh, if you want to have a look, we'll put a uh, link in the description uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, so, uh, the X Power Podcast is your weekly Xbox show, talking about what we've been playing, all the games we're excited about, and uh, all the latest Xbox news, rumors, and leaks, and everything else from the world of Xbox. Uh, bit housekeeping for you. Uh, currently, I'm doing my uh, road to 100k gamer score, and my gamer score is currently at uh, 94,681. Uh, so over the coming months, I'm going to be trying striving for 100k. And um, what what led me to think about this is uh, every so often, right, I get these uh, codes from uh, Rattalaker Games. Uh, mm. Do you about them? Um, they they make these really sure. well. They don't make them. Sorry, they publish them. Um, it, I don't want to say indie games. They're not independent, but um, it, you know, smaller creators. Uh, they make these quirky little yeah. games. Uh, for example, so the ones I've lined up. Uh, for for the hundred k thing, because they keep sending me from reviews, and they send me so many. Like I haven't got time to review them all. So I thought this would be a cool sure, way yeah. to show them off, and uh, and you know. Make a cool bit of content as I'll, you know, try and make uh, 100k, and then you know the sky's the limit. We can go to 150, da da, da so on and so forth, right? Uh, so cool. And the other thing is, they're famously they've got quite easy achievements. <laughs> like literally, <laughs> game I'm playing right good. now. <laughs> uh, Foxyland 2 is uh, it's like a kind of Mario style uh, 2D platformer. It's really actually really a good little game. Uh, hmm. it, and it, it's literally like you, uh, you collect coins. There's boxes you smash with your head. You jump on enemies. You can throw cherries at them uh, as well. Uh, you, you just collect off of trees, right? Uh, there's all the usual tropes like double jumping and wall jumping, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sure. And there's like three foxy coins in every level, which is basically like the stars out of, out of Mario Brothers. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, so a cool little game, and uh, I'm playing that one just now. Um, <clears throat> and th these games, they're like between three and five pounds. Uh, you know, so f for what they are, you know, they're not robbing you, and they're pretty cool. Uh, and I say you can get some cheap cheevos of it, which is a bonus. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're on the hunt for achievements, then yeah, that sounds like a cool way to go. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, so another game is Milo's Quest, uh, which is a kind of top-down 2D adventure, kind of Zelda-style game, right? But you play as a little dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, it's a, like you've got lots of cute little things. Very cute little uh, art style, you know, kind of pixelated art style. Yeah. Uh, I've got another game lined up called Gravity Duck, which I haven't really looked at yet, to be honest. Um, I just liked the name. I thought, yeah, ducks are cool. I'll add that, that one in. <laughs> yeah, that does sound cool. <laughs> Gravity Duck. Ooh, interesting. Um, 
Yeah. I was say, they, they, they send me codes for these. Um, football game, which is a kind of um, a kind of um, kind of narrative um, game. Um, you basically pay through the story. I think it's a kind of high school jock type of dude, right? Uh, he plays football mm-hmm. and it, it's got things about his relationships, like his girlfriend and things. Uh, so that looked interesting. Uh, I love that coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then lastly, I've got Voodoo Fence Remastered, um, which I've ne- not got right. <laughs> what is that? Voodoo Fence, mate, was. Um, well, that actually leads into the next uh, topic of the show. Let's do the Xbox. It was a original Xbox uh, 3D platformer. And it, 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 you played as a voodoo doll, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? And it had interesting mechanics where if you hurt yourself, it could hurt enemies and things. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, ch- check that out. Uh, you know, g- look up a, 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 a video for Voodoo Vince. It's quite an interesting cool. uh, thing in right, the cool. Xbox back catalogue. <laughs> You get Voodoo Vince Remastered, um, and I think it's quite cheap uh, to, to, to buy. It m- might be on Game Pass, possibly. I can't remember, but yeah. But I've got that because it like, it's, it's looks quite an easy uh, achievement, and I've been meaning to play it forever. So, like, you know, um, it's one I've picked cool. up cheap and, like, not got around to. Um, cool. So, without further ado, uh, this project... It, this pod, this product, this podcast is brought to you by NX Techs, but we will talk to you about that later because this is the X Power podcast, and our topic of the show today is <coughs> our history with Xbox. So, you obviously, didn't know Voodoo Vince. So, uh, what's your history of Xbox? Um, you know, which Xbox consoles have you owned, and what's your some of your favorite right. games? Yeah. Okay. Um. So I was quite late to the party uh, when it right. comes to Xbox. Uh, yep. I never had an original Xbox. Uh, I was more of a PC gamer back then. Um, sure. I didn't actually sure. get a 360 until late 2006. Right. Um, because of, well, it coincided with me getting my first job in the industry. Uh, yep. I, I started working in a small studio in Ireland. And um, what we would do is several times a day, we would find ourselves locked in the conference room playing four-player split-screen Call of Duty 2 on the 360. Awesome. And um, awesome. that was it. <laughs> that was uh-huh. it for me. So I had yeah, to, yeah. I had to yeah. buy one. Um, so that was, I spent a lot of hours playing Call of Duty 2. Um, but then my, you know, my gaming was fairly evenly split between 360, PC, and um, not long after that, PS3, because I started working for Sony in 2007. Um, yeah. And I got a PS4 when it launched. Obviously, I was still working at Sony then. Um, but when I got made redundant from Sony in 2015, I immediately sold my PS4 and got an Xbox One. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, then I, I kind of switched to Xbox as my primary <laughs> gaming yeah. machine then, and sure. I pretty much now only use a PC for World of Warcraft. Um, yep. <laughs> now I have an original Xbox One in the living room, and I've got an Xbox One X on my uh, on my desk in my office. Excellent. Um, yeah, well, um, <clears throat> the, the thing that's interesting you said about a PC gamer, right? Because, like, um, at that point, although, like, I had... Um, God, let me think. I had um, a Dreamcast. I had a Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. And then I, had, I got the PS2. Let me dial it back. I mm-hmm. had saved up to buy a PS2, right? Because they were really expensive when they came out. And I saved up for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. But they were like hen's teeth. You just couldn't get them. They're sold out everywhere. And so that was why they, I seen uh, the Dreamcast. Now... Century. I've always been a Sega kid growing up. Uh-huh. Um, I had a Master System too, and then I had a Super Nintendo. Um, but I, I, I played a lot of them kind of Mega Drive games on the Master System, you know what I mean? Uh, so, the, mm-hmm. and well, like, I, I've got older sisters, so my nephews are only a few years younger than me. So, what we used to do is, like, we used to. Um, um, like, like we used to get the opposite, right? So like I had a Spectrum, they had a C64, right? 
uh, the Master System, mm-hmm. they had an NES, uh, you know, they got the Mega Drive, I got the Super Nintendo, you know, they, and because we're always trying to be right. those houses, right, so we could play everything. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, but so, so coming back, so the Dreamcast, well, you know, uh, I had the PS1 for that, and the Dreamcast was obviously uh, not a massive success. Um, so it was on sale um, in Argos at the time. It was like a hundred and twenty-five pounds, and you were getting. Um, Metropolis Street Racing was one. There was like three games. Mm -hmm. I think Dynamite Cop and maybe Sonic. Can't remember, right? But it was like three games, 125 quid. It was a great deal at the time, a lot cheaper than the PS2. And I absolutely Mm -hmm. loved my Dreamcast. That was like amazing. (laughs) Oh, years and years of love for that, man. Um, I eventually did get a PS2 later on because obviously... You know, the Dreamcast didn't kick off. Sony exited the hardware business and um, obviously it stopped getting supported. So I bought a PS2. I bought the silver uh, limited edition one that came out. And, well, I didn't find out until afterwards, but, it, it, you know, it, it had a lot of problems, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and mine died 13 months after I bought it. It was like a month out of warranty. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, got it. And very, very angry. Uh, 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 yeah. PlayStation, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I, I got a original Xbox. It's actually my sister that sold me a, a original Xbox. Uh, and yeah. yeah, I've just been Team Green ever since. I mean, I have owned other consoles, <laughs> but... Xbox is my main platform, you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, well, enough. actually, <clears throat> uh, just before that, my nephews got an Xbox and they showed me Halo, um, <laughs> which is what we're about to play <laughs> in a minute. Uh, they showed sure. me Halo and that just blew me away. Um, but also, um, I'd also got into PC gaming, as you said, right? And the original Xbox. Mm-hmm. Because, um, like, I, I was buying a PC, I was getting new graphics cards and all of that, right? But what was great about the, mm-hmm. the Xbox is it was very ahead of its time, uh, you know, in yeah. terms of power. You were getting a lot of power in that box. Um, and then it had lots of things like a hard drive, um, you know. Um, to like, it, it, it was just like you could put music on it, you could rip CDs to it, right? So I did just like sure, yeah. filled with music, and like you could put music in your games, and that was amazing at the time, right? Um, but it also got a lot of games that traditionally only released on the PC at the time, right? So, like, you had like right. Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind on there, uh, Kotor, you know, you had, um, 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 Doom 3 was, you know... Oh, yeah, sure. You couldn't uh, play that on a PS2. It was just too, you know, they, they, too graphically intense, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so th- there was all these games, you know, that, that, that you could only... You either get on Xbox or PC, right? But then the PC had yeah, the problems of dealing with... And it used to be like you, you needed new blooming graphics cards all the time, right? Because, like, it moved so fast. Um, yeah. And, like, they were constantly pushing it forward. So, yeah, so um, that was a reason for the Xbox. And, oh, man, you know, like, like we weren't talking about Halo, Kotor, even, like, Voodoo Vince, right? It's completely exclusive. And they were so interested at the time, so like that's how I started. Uh, yeah. And then you know d- what you were talking about, like Call of Duty Two, right? Three sixty Xbox Live, yeah. right? It was such a brand new mm. thing. Yeah, that was, gaming and that was fantastic. It was LAN it? parties such on a, the such a game kind changer. Of really kind of got into that on the OG Xbox, the old LAN party thing. But you know that's how it started. And then you obviously had connected online. Um, yeah. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, mm. But yeah, so what was some of your favourite games then from from Xbox? Oh, 
Oh man, so many, so many. So yeah. um not exclusive, just anything, you know, like you mentioned Call of Duty 2. Was that your kind of your first online experience or uh, I didn't actually play it online. I, right. I strictly played it either single player or split screen. Well, uh, four player right. split yeah, screen yeah, yeah, in the yeah. office. And yeah, that yeah, was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. But um from there I just kind of absorbed every every game I I kind of could. So some a few favorites. Uh let's see. Um Deus Ex Human Revolution, that was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome although game. Didn't wasn't as quite quite as com as complete as the PC version, but I played it on both. Yeah. Um. Ma the Mass Effect series, obviously, Halo Reach, three, course, three, and ODST. Yeah. Those yeah, were yeah. standout games for me. Uh, Fallout yeah. Three, I put a lot of time into. Yeah. Uh, totally. The Orange Box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dragon Age Origins, Dead yeah. Rising, uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, the original Modern Warfare was one. Um, yeah. And did you ever play one versus one hundred? You ever play that? I didn't. No, no. This is this that was thing spectacular. That, like... I wish yeah. they bring that back because that yeah. was something special. Yeah. But it, yeah. it was, it was, yeah. it was yeah. really, it was really weird actually because even. Um, you know... I kind of missed that because like I was in the army, so I used to like move around a lot. So like, um, I wasn't online as much, you know, um, because I was like moving. Um, I used to use like mobile broadband sometimes, but at the time, like it was, ju it wasn't really viable to play online with it because it was really expensive um, at the time, you know. Um, so I, I, I maybe missed that, you know, that whole thing. But yeah, yeah, I've, I've read up on it. It sounds amazing. I hope they bring it back. Yeah, yeah that would be great. We, uh, yeah, we got yeah. my my uh, my mother and father-in-law round. To yeah. actually everybody participate in it and it was it? the weirdest yeah. thing we never got chosen yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was just so weird because it was live uh, and it was a real host doing it and it just hadn't seen anything like it before it was fantastic yeah 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 you know you don't get a lot of quiz games now you know what i mean i used to love things like that like um um buzz was the ps the playstation one yeah <laughs> with them controllers buzz. man well, a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, there was there was a 360 version of uh -huh. that kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It wasn't I'm, seen I'm it. I'm struggling uh, to think. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, yeah, seen it. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, was it, it was, seen all, it? It was yeah, a movie quiz. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. They had their own yeah. buzzers. Yeah, 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 I was fantastic yeah, at that. Yeah, I was unbeatable, yeah, yeah. so nobody wanted to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you've seen it. And, um, well, I'm just, I, I, lips spring sprung to my mind, right? Because that was like an Xbox exclusive singing game. Uh, ah, <laughs> okay. right. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Away from it just ones. sprung to my mind, <laughs> kind of in the same ballpark, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of fun stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, look, you know, a lot of the same games that you mentioned, right? Um, so starting, but starting from the OG. So some of the games I mentioned before, like. Halo, obviously, Halo 2. I mean, with Halo Infinite coming up, right, I've said this, right, mm. um, they want to make it, like, Halo 2's launch was a massive worldwide cultural event, right? It was phenomenal. Yeah, it completely passed me by. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't, well, it I wasn't was really the... into it then. No, the first game on Xbox Live was Rainbow Six 3. Um, mm. But Halo 2 was the most anticipated game for, you know, Xbox Live. It was brand new multiplayer yeah. game, yeah, of course, uh, uh, online gaming. Um, and on your know, after Wasn't it the combat, first game evolved, to do matchmaking. Yes, yes. It, it it basically it set a lot of things that you see now in 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 most games, right? Like matchmaking. Um, um, oh, I'm lobbies as well, I think, wasn't it? Was it more? Yeah, lobbies? yeah, like lobbies and all that, and, and that part, kind of thing. Know, yeah, it was all, a real game yeah, changer. All of that, it was a real, real game changer. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and then like obviously, like things like the Elder Scrolls Morrowind. That <laughs> funny little story, right? Um, when I was growing up, <laughs> and I was a young adolescent teen. Uh, 
when my brother-in-law, or ex-brother-in-law, uh, was playing the Frost Elder Scrolls game, Arena. All right. Um, and <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. Remember vividly, it had a lass, a blonde lass on the front with large assets. Uh, yes, I remember. <laughs> which it's drew me and my nephew it. to it. Um, we didn't, we hadn't played anything like that at the time. And Big Angry Dad was his password for his PC. <laughs> so that's uh-huh. where that comes from, right? So, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we used to go into his PC and he would go ape at us, right, for like playing his games. Um, and yeah, but that that was that was the you know that was what one of the games we used to play on his PC. Uh, it was Elder yeah. Scrolls Arena, and then we played uh, Daggerfall, right? So then, like Morrowind, mm. but Morrowind was the first, um, you know, like you were talking Fallout Three, Skyrim, Oblivion, right? Or Morrowind was the first one of that scope, right? This massive yes, open world, and that absolutely blew my mind at the time. Uh, Fable, uh, the original oh, yeah. Fable. I, I love it to this day. Uh, recently, I played the anniversary edition, uh, and they've they've upgraded mm. it to like 4K on on the X and stuff, you know, and it looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, Fable uh, blew me away. Um, what else? Kotor, you know what I mean? Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic one and two. Yeah, still Just one of my favorites of all time. Amazing. Amazing. I've tried to go back and replay that a few times, but yeah. it's just so dated now. It's really painful. It to is. Try and get through. Yeah, they've kind but of I cleaned absolutely that love up. Star Wars: The Old Republic. That's uh-huh. that's uh-huh. that was a pretty good uh, yeah, thing to well, play instead. There's actually those. Um, did I put this in? Um, no, it was last week's show. I talked about this, right? There's a re- a rumor. Sorry, a rumor yeah, about I've, uh, I've heard the it. remake. And then I was saying, well. You know, uh, Phil Spencer's going to the initiative, right? And he's he's put up now that he's played their game that they're making, right? And they said, it's uh-huh. new things and old things. And I said, well, what if it's KOTOR? What if they've made a deal? No. Yeah. It won't um, be, not until the EA deal has ended. Yeah, I, um, I thought, what if they made a deal with EA for exclusive? I, I don't know. I was just spitballing, right? But I mean, a, a, a new or a remake of KOTOR, right? Uh, given the same love and attention as like Resident Evil 2 and Final Fantasy 7 and is about to get mm-hmm. with that game, right? Man, that would just be incredible. You know, if they made like. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be just the um, most perfect way for Disney and EA's relationships just kind of end you know for them to go their separate ways yeah. um, on a real banger yeah. like that real banger they've yeah, got time yeah. for one more big game yeah um yeah and I, I don't have any inside information um mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. uh yeah i i if if the rumors are true i am very very excited yeah i would love to have the new absolutely the nice Republic absolutely. game any star wars game gets me yeah. excited i mean yeah, I, yeah. jedi fallen order was fantastic i i one k that um, yeah. and, and they just they made getting a thousand game points in that game so very clear exactly what you needed to do and very very achievable Absolutely. you didn't have to go through multiple playthroughs you just had to put in the time and uh, yeah that's a that's a fantastic game excellent so excellent. any Star Wars game gets me excited yeah definitely yeah yeah so yeah so um you know moving on right so you've talked about Star Wars Jedi Fallen all that you played quite recently right uh, but mm. what have you been playing at the moment? Yeah, I know you were talking to me about the um, the quest. Very impressive. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've not really been playing much on the Xbox recently because I got uh, an Oculus uh, an Oculus Quest, and that is yeah. an impressive big hit. Yeah. Um, and you can actually stream Xbox games onto it. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't for those that know, no. With the Quest, you can obviously, you don't need a PC, it's a completely standalone product with its own store and you buy your games, uh, it just runs on it. It's, and it's wireless, correct? That you can just use it anyway? Yes, it's entirely wireless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm-hmm. yeah, the really great thing about it is, is that yeah. in addition to games that are built specifically for it and, and, yeah. and optimized to run on it completely wirelessly, you can 
uh, you can plug in a cable into your PC. If you've got yeah. a gaming yeah. PC that's yeah. capable yeah. of playing yeah. VR games, uh, it will be picked up as a Rift, and you can play those games on the Quest as if it was the Rift. Yeah. Um, so you get awesome. the best of both worlds. Awesome. And you can even, if you don't have a cable, but you've got a fast Wi-Fi connection, you can yeah. actually stream games. This is artificially supported, but you can stream games from your PC over to the Quest. Full resolution, full yeah. quality VR games on a wireless headset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's incredible. We are living yeah, in awesome. the future. It's awesome. amazing. Oh, yeah, death, totally, totally. Um, so, yeah, it, is, is it about £400? Is that right? Yeah, it's £400, yeah. yeah. I got the... Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're getting uh, to, like, a more... Going on now. Um, you know, uh, a, a commercial price point for, you know, for VR. Yes, you know what absolutely. I mean? Because obviously you yeah. started, it was really expensive, and you obviously need a really yeah. expensive PC, but this £400 gets you the kit, and away you go. And then if you want to get yeah. the PC, for, you know, as you say, to the, like stream the games and all that, you can do. Uh, it's an option. Yeah. Now. So yeah, we're getting yeah, to a good spot is. with VR. Um, it just needs that kind of um, uh, kind of mainstream killer push, app. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Killer app, and we've obviously got well, like Half Life like Alex Half-Life is coming, coming up. Um, yeah. oh, do you yes, think that is. maybe um, maybe they'll? Like, obviously you can stream it and all that, right? But you can't play it natively. Do you think that's maybe a possibility? Uh, that um, they would I pull doubt up it. Down? I doubt it for... Um, I doubt it for Half-Life Alex because the, the Quest comes in two versions. It comes in a 64 gig version and a 128 yeah. gig version. Um, Half-Life Alex might fit on the 128 gig version. Uh, but I might struggle the game on would this. Need to Is be it not expandable by downgraded. SSD or anything? Uh, can you no, expand the no, story? That no. would be nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Um, Half Life, Half Life Two is being built for high-end VR, so they would have to downscale that, downgrade it very, very dramatically to get it to just yeah. fit on yeah. the hardware, let alone even run on the hardware. But you don't need to because you can plug in a cable or you can stream mm. it away. I was going to say it, uh, you can play it. What was me and my mate talking about? You know the MVME. It's like a little hard drive you can get. It's like the, st- the size of a stick of chewing gum, my mate says, right? He just got one. Um, right. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, it, something like that you could probably expand the storage with. Uh, yeah, to be honest with you, I am quite surprised that it doesn't come with uh, the option of, uh, uh, of expanding uh, it, but I guess they want to sell the 128 gig version. Yeah, you know? totally. Um, Maybe they but could add the it via firmware. Are, are I'm not available sure. for Quest that but, um, they're only about they're only about yeah. a gig or two. It's or like, in the next it's, iteration, it's, it's in a Quest Two, right? If they had something like that, maybe because um, it's not quite expensive. Yeah. The, um, the, the the things the mates talking about. Um, yeah, I don't remember. It was like 50, 60 quid or something for. I don't know a terabyte or whatever it was, right? It's, it's you know it's not overly expensive. Uh, this, because he was saying about that, right? We, we'll talk about it. Actually, I'll just throw it out now because we're kind of in the same ballpark, right? Is um, Xbox uh, I had it as a news story of the day, and um, the mystery port on the Series X. They're like, have you seen this? Um, there's like a, a square, not a square, a, a, a kind of longer port. Um, <clears throat> um, and they didn't know what it was for. Initially, they thought it was a debugging uh, port. Um, mm-hmm. But Brad Sams has said that it's actually for expandable storage on the Series X. And it's it, it, the size uh, of it, right? The size of it. <clears throat> it could be an NVMe. I've heard that mentioned for the Xbox before, right? But you, mm. you're just looking at the size of that port. Um, if you, if you like, look it up. Um, it, oh, actually, in your show notes, I think I put a link to it, right? Um, was it? Have a look. Maybe I've got confused. Uh, let's see, use. Yeah, yeah, you've got a look. It's thorot dot com. Uh, Xbox Series X mystery port revealed. Uh, yeah, so like with the MVME, like that that kind of size of storage, I think 
Like on on the, uh, on that, mate. Uh, Brad Sams talks about some blooming expensive thing. Oh, I forget what he calls it, but this thing was like five six hundred quid for a card. Yeah. Uh, and it's meant to be super mm -hmm. fast. This brand new thing, right? But I'm like, no chance, mate. You're not gonna pay five hundred quid for a bloody card. No. Please. You know, first no, the story, but it's, it must be this brand new thing that's you know super quick or whatever, right? And uh, I thought, no, you just buy another bloody console for that price, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that would kind of make you want to stop actually buying games that you have to download and, and lean more into uh, a streaming kind of solution aye, where you don't need to install anything at mm. all. So maybe there are there the considering the the different thing. options for the future. You know, VR could have streaming mm. built in. <laughs> and and, and yeah. they're not too distant, alright? So that would eliminate the storage problem, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, yeah, but well, I, I got Stadia when it came out. And I fully oh, yeah. I was aware. It works brilliantly. It works absolutely yeah. brilliantly. The game looked fantastic. 60. Some of the games weren't 60, but, you know, the, the games ran smooth, no input lag or nothing like that. And I've played games on yeah. my TV, I've played games on my phone, i got the Pixel 3. Fantastic phone, like, and it, I got an upgrade, and I, I looked at it, it's a great phone. Um, so I picked it up. Um, the only thing, I had problems with my laptop, but I think it's because my laptop's... I don't know. It did, It doesn't like Chrome for some reason, I haven't had time to sort it out. Um, but yeah, but it works absolutely brilliantly. Uh, the only thing is lack of content. That's basically their problem right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sure. if they'd have come out and said, "Oh well, listen, this is a beta," you know, yes, it's 120 quid. You got a controller that was 60 pounds, I think, um, and then the Chromecast is 70, um, mm -hmm. and then your three months pro was like 30 quid. So I think it worked out about 150 quid. So you're getting for 120, right? If you if you look at it that yeah. way. But if they'd have came out and uh -huh. said, right, look, this is a new thing. We're going into early access. If you want in day one, here it is. And they've come up just uh, yesterday, I think it was, and said that um, um, the the free version would be launching in, in the next couple of months. Uh, so oh, anybody right, cool. can just jump on. Um, you know, you buy the game or I sub definitely for... like to check it out. Yeah, yeah. You you can sub for is it ten or a month, eight pound? I can't I can't remember exact price, right? Because it was free for three months for me, um, and I have cancelled it right now because there just wasn't anything else I wanted to play at the moment on it. Sure. Um, so I've pulled it off. But at any point, I can just resub and you know I can play the games again if I want. Um, Bought yeah. a couple of games on it. They had some decent discount, although it was older games. They had some really good discounts on it. I played like Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, like the 2013 Tomb Raider, um, and that yeah. was, you know, um, like 4K. No, tell I. But the, it, it, I think it's 4K 30, or you can play it in 1080p 60. I think that's what the thing was. Um, right. Which isn't actually available on like the X or anything. They haven't enhanced that game, so I played through that again. Um, I played uh, Rise again, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and that was amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was kind of at a at a point where I wanted to play those games again, so I did. I love Tomb Raider. Yeah. Like Tomb Raider's my favorite series of all time. Um, so yeah. So what do you think of this this new reboot? Um, trilogy. Mm, mm, I, I really enjoyed them, yeah. Um, I think Shadow was kind of like their Arkham Origins moment, right? It was a different developer. Um, Rise, I think, is the best of the three. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I really, really loved them. I think, uh, they, you know, they did a lot of awesome stuff. Maybe a little bit. You know, the same like copying Uncharted, right? Um, you know, we, 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 it's kind of, um, kind of, kind of more linearity kind of thing. Uh, but they kind of yes, sure. 
in the first one definitely right like it felt like you were just following you know a set path like, if you know what I mean yeah. the climbing and stuff like that where mm -hmm. this is, the older games were a little bit more open um, yes I think they improved a lot of that in Rise uh, and again with I just put Montreal did uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider um, but yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed all three. They're, they're excellent games. Um, I think it was the right direction for the series going forward. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I've been saying that, like, I, I replayed Underworld, Tomb Raider Underworld, uh, recently as well. It's 360. Uh, it hasn't had any hands yeah, back sure, or anything. Yeah. But even just with the power of the X, right, just stabilizing that frame rate and, you know, upscaling to 4K still looked beautiful. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it's obviously it's Avengers next, so they're taking a bit of a break from Tomb oh, Raider, yeah. which I think is a good idea. Um, they want to take a break yes. and come back with some more fresh ideas and, you know, um, take us forward with it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I feel like the, the first Tomb Raider reboot game, I thought that was something special. I thought that was excellent. I thought they solved... The the issue I've always had with Uncharted is that you're playing this happy-go-lucky guy. He's a likeable guy. He's friendly. He's happy. He's a good yeah. person. But he will snap someone's neck. Uh, just this poor soldier. Just this person yeah. who's paid <laughs> to defend this, this base or whatever. He'll just yeah. sneak up behind them and snap their necks. Now, yeah. he could have just choked them out, but no, he snaps their necks. And that <laughs> always sat really, really badly with me. Yeah. Whereas with, with Tomb Raider, they put her in a situation um, completely yeah. alien to her, put her in a completely desperate situation where if she doesn't kill them first, they Do are going die. to rape and kill her. <laughs> so yeah. you feel exactly. that. Exactly. You feel that desperation um, and that <clears throat> she doesn't have any choice. Um, and yeah. I really, really like that. But I didn't... I didn't like the second game as much, and I haven't actually finished the third game. I just, I just, it yeah. just uh, lost lost some of the magic lost. for me. Um, yeah, after the first one. yeah, yeah. I think the first one, yeah, was the tone um, of her being this young kind of frightened woman, and her journey mm. into being the Tomb Raider. You know, um, was yeah. incredible. It was incredible. Um, obviously. Um, Oh God, I'm blanking on his name. Is it Drew? Oh God, old mate. Uh, the initiative. Uh, the initiative. Yeah, I know who you mean. Uh, uh, God, if I just sorry, no, the name is Gates PC. Uh, Clad Knuckles is his Twitter handle. Yeah, yeah, Drew Murray. Drew Murray. Drew um, Murray, there you go. Yeah, he's at um, he's over helming the initiative now, uh, which have obviously been building up. Now he, he, he said just recently it started as two people in uh, 2018, and over the, the last two years they've been hiring loads of uh, you know really talented developers like from Rockstar, uh, Sony Santa Monica, mm -hmm. God of War. Uh, they've got guys from um, EA, I think, as well, some of them. Uh, so it's just some really yep. talented folks uh, building that studio. And then you know, Phil Spencer's visiting the studio. And it's got a playable, it's a playable demo or whatever Something. it is. A playable yeah. bit of the, the, what they're working on. So we can only assume E3 2020, they're going to have the big reveal, right? Um, what that's going to be, so... Yeah, you would expect so. And, well, people have said, right, because I was talking to Ryan McCaffrey, uh, you know, on uh, mm -hmm. IGN. I was IGN, talking to him sure, on yeah. Twitter, right, uh, we were talking about this, what this game that Spencer's alluding to, right? Uh, and everyone jumped on Perfect Dark, but, like, I was just throwing kind of other things out. I was like, well... You know, what if it was scale bound? Because that you could class that as yeah, an well, old thing right now, right? Uh, people think yeah, it's well, dead. Yeah, Platinum have come out recently, so <coughs> they want to, they want they to want make to it. it. Um, yeah. What was yeah? I've got that as a news segment actually, right? 
uh, platinum games, really. Um, I think I have. Yeah, but it was yeah. Microsoft that cancelled it. It was Microsoft that decided they didn't yeah. want to go ahead with it. So unless it was, they, they weren't missing, they weren't hitting their targets and stuff. And I think there was people unwell at the studio. I remember reading. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. There was people really unwell um, at the studio, so they were missing a lot of their mm. milestones, right, in development. Um. So yeah, it was cancelled. And if you remember when it was like revealed and all that, right, when we seen it. Um, I don't know about you, but I wasn't terribly impressed. I didn't like the look of the main character. I thought yeah, he looked yeah, that like, was the main um, one, right? Just this generic guy wearing Beats yeah. headphones. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it looked yeah. like we've seen that kind of guy, and, and the whole personality of the character. We've seen that a million times before. It didn't feel particularly original. Everything else looked great. The dragon looked great. But that main character didn't really speak to me, and I guess didn't really speak to a lot of people. Um, but I would like to see the game come back with a different protagonist, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at this, right, and I, I can't see... I don't think that Microsoft have uh, responded, at the, you know, yet. <laughs> um, at least not publicly. No. Um, so, yeah, so we'll see what transpires of that um, you know w w when they announce uh, the official response um, yeah if they even do yeah but going back to perfect dark right and then people were like well you know Drew Murray rebooted Tomb Raider right uh, uh -huh. how amazing that was they could totally do yeah. the same with perfect dark yeah perfect um, dark was another one that I never that, that yeah. totally skipped by yeah. me. So what yeah. was the premise yeah. of Perfect Dark? <coughs> um, well, you obviously, you must know Goldeneye, right? Goldeneye uh, on yeah, the I, N64. Yeah, I never actually played it, but could... yeah, sure, I know it, yeah. I dabbled with it in an emulator. I never had an N64. But basically what happened was, um, you know, the, the Bond license run out, and... They made a spiritual sequel, um, rather than you know, you know, pay, paying for the board license again. Uh, so Perfect yeah. Dark, Joanna Dark, as a similar kind of Bond-style secret agent, right, with oh, okay. all these gadgets and stuff. First-person shooting, mm -hmm. but it kind of um, was a little bit like Metroid, uh, Metroid Prime, in particular, because it's first-person. Um, mm. So all these gadgets and like. You had to use them, uh, you know, to access different areas, that kind of style, right? Uh, right, okay, yeah. So yeah, so that, that was uh, perfect. Now, I'd, I hadn't actually played the... Because I never had an N64, right? I played Perfect Dark Zero, the 360 launch title. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic game at the time. And I think, like, when I'm reading... Like, a lot of people seem to be a bit dismissive of that game, right? Because it was a launch title, and... First person shooters yeah. on consoles was still kind of new. Um, but at the time, I thought it was a great game. And I was looking at the Metacritic, right? It sits at an 81 when, when it came out. And like IGN gave it an 8.4. And what if, like GameSpot and a lot of the other big outlets were like between that and a 9. So it was, you know, uh, critically well received. Um, yeah, but obviously mechanically, if you play it now, because it's like on rare replay, it's back compat, right? Uh, mechanically, it doesn't really hold up. But yeah, what they've talked about is more of a third-person, gritty kind of story-focused uh, reboot. Uh, hmm. um, more about the character of Joanna Dark. So definitely very, very interesting. Lot of potential there. Yeah. Yeah. And because, you know, it's going to be a first party that will be included in Game Pass, so yeah. I'm already paying yeah. for that, so yeah. get, it, it. get it for free, get it, check it out. Absolutely, cool. absolutely. Um, so, just before we move on then, uh, a little bit about what I've been playing. I've been uh, playing recently uh, Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, oh, I, yeah. I spoke a little bit about that. Look forward to Will of the Wisps. Played the Definitive Edition yeah. for the first time playing through it. So I played those new areas. Absolutely loved it. Uh, and what was interesting was it had its own achievements as well. 
So <laughs> yeah, like you know the the definitive version of brand new achievement lists. Uh, a lot of the same ones that I'd already got, but hey, I'll take you know the extra mm-hmm. G's. Um, so, but prior to that, I played uh, Plague Tale Innocence because uh, it just oh, got yeah. added to that? Game Pass. Excellent, yeah. excellent. I was really impressed with it. Um, cool. Yeah, I need to check that out. Yeah, yeah. I, do you see when the previews? I'm looking at them and I'm going, oh, I don't know, because I'm not terribly into stealth and that, you know. Um, but they did not do the game justice at all, right? Um, no. Yeah, obviously you're playing as Amicia, who's this. I don't think it really says in the game, but I, 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 with a look at maybe about 15, 16 years old, uh, yeah. and a little brother Hugo is about seven or eight, right? Uh, they've never actually met each other, which is interesting. I don't know what's happened there, right? Uh, but like it's implied that the the mother and father doesn't live together, uh, you know? right? Um, and like, so when the play happens and the rats and all of that, right? Uh, the the soldiers are you know going about and Hugo uh, has the plague, but he's like immune. Um, so he's, oh, right, you know, he's okay, so he's a carrier. Guy carrier and so they're trying to get him to you know try and figure it out uh with his blood and all that and yeah so it ends up amicia you know uh, ends up taking hugo who she's never really i don't think they've not met before but they've not really spent a whole lot of time together right um and she yeah. suddenly got to be like a surrogate mother to him uh and we're being a kid to herself you know, you get this interesting dynamic where she's like snapping at him, and and like Hugo gets really upset, and yeah, it's really the story is fantastic, right? This dynamic, these yeah. two characters, and then the other characters they meet along the way, kind of in a similar vein to like The Last of Us. Um, you know, we how like, long is it? Um, about ten hours. About ten hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was good, it was a really digestible game as well, because it's like 17 chapters, and like each one's yeah. about half an hour, 45 minutes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah, do like yeah. Games do that. So you can play like a chapter at a time. So it was really kind of digestible that way, you know. Uh, yeah. And then you always get a... It, it's like an episode. You know, episodes of a, a TV series, right? You get to sure. the end of chapter, something interests happens. You keep wanting to play again. You keep wanting to play more and more and more. And like my wife got into the story of it, which is a kind of rare occurrence. But she she likes a really good story in a game. And even yeah. like the stealth mechanics and and all of that. Um, we get to the point where she gets all these abilities and she's stronger, so she can like just basically directly take the soldiers on, right, with a slingshot. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. And like, there's all these interesting mechanics with the rats. Like, we, we the rats uh, are afraid of light, and it, so they only come out at night. And then there's like torches, right? So like, sometimes mm-hmm. you've got to light them up in order to make it to the next bit, or you can extinguish them. So if a, a soldier's carrying a torch, you can extinguish them so the the rats eat them, right? <laughs> you know. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of cool stuff. Check it out. It's on Game Pass. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'll do. Um, yeah, definitely recommend that. So, um, anything else? Uh, any other games you want to talk about before we move on? Um, well, I guess other than just playing stuff on the Quest, I've been the, yeah. the only Xbox yeah. game I've been yeah. really playing lately is Dauntless. I've been playing a lot of Dauntless. Awesome, awesome. Because uh, yeah. it's on the Switch as well, and it's cross-platform, cross-play. Um, so it's nice and convenient to just kind of pick up and play that when I'm sat on the sofa. But, um, yeah, Dauntless is great, because I think you and yeah. I met... I have to check that. Monster Hunter Monster World, Hunter, that's we? right. Yeah, yeah. I have to check it yeah, out. Yeah, so I'm we started really playing Monster out. Hunter together. Yep, yep. And, uh, um, and and Dauntless is just I got to a Diablos. more compressed experience. I got, I got to Diablos on Monster Hunter World, and I've tried it a few times, and then I'm never going back because I just I couldn't be yeah, it. Yeah, I, I. It I'm, was my I'm the same. my yeah, wall. I couldn't, I couldn't be it. I didn't roll credits. 
Um, uh, and it just the, the, the issue. I haven't gone back to Monster Hunter World. I, I, I want yeah. to because that experience was yeah, really, really yeah. great. Um, yeah. But it just takes like an hour to find a thing and, and kill the yeah. thing. Whereas, yeah. whereas Dauntless has the same gameplay flow, but it's much more compressed. Much more immediate. So within the space right? of twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's much more accessible. Within yeah. the space of 20 minutes, you could have prepared for a hunt, hunted and killed a monster, and come back and crafted new stuff from its bits, and then be ready to move on again. It is Monster Hunter. It's every bit yeah. as challenging as Monster Hunter, but they cut out all of the time-consuming bollocks that you just don't need to do. Uh, it's really, really good. And it's free to play. It's, cool. it's cool. fantastic. Um, yeah, so the, like microtransactions and all of that, is it quite... Uh... Fair? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it, it's 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 fairly generous. Uh, there, yep. There's a there's a, uh, a season pass thing. Mm -hmm. So every uh, every month or so, you know, if you it, you get to do the optional thing of of buying into that, so you get cosmetic rewards as you as you level up. You know, pretty standard fare. Um, but the the game itself awesome, is awesome. Uh, I have to jump on with you sometimes and check that. it out, right? Yeah, uh, it's great. You know absolutely. And we could do a stream, so yeah, look out for that. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. There's so so much right now. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> it was funny, it like, does? well, for some reason, Microsoft refunded Cyberpunk 2077 because mm -hmm. I pre-ordered it and then it got delayed. Right, so I don't know uh, why. Um, but they refunded huh. it, and then it, it was it's on CD keys now for forty two ninety nine. I thought, well, fair enough. I'll just buy it off that, you know, <laughs> uh, later on. Cause it's not coming <laughs> sure. out September now. So I thought, right, well, sixty five quid got credited to my account, right? So I was like, hmm. Mm. Well, I think I had a fiver left on it from whatever. Um, and then I was like, hmm. So I was looking at what's coming out, and I pre-ordered Resi Three Remake. Uh, so nice, I yeah. loved Resi 2. I was going to wait until it was cheaper, but I thought, oh, well, I've got the money. I thought, well, hey. Uh, so I pre-ordered that, and then um, um, it was 50. So I had, like, 15. So I put a quid to it. Well, Resi 6, remaster for 16 quid. So be, <laughs> I'm playing oh, nice. that at the moment. Um, I really like it, Resident Evil 6. You know, hmm. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, and the remaster looks great. You know, I played Resi 5 Remaster uh, as well. I actually got a review code for that. Um, and it looks fantastic as well. If you like Resident Evil 5, you know, it's 16 quid as well. And actually, mm. some of them's on Game Pass. I don't think... Yeah, they maybe. are, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Resi 5, it might be. That's another Can't remember I what really one. Got into. Some of them are, some of them are. Um, mm. Really? Right, right, right. Resi 2 Remake. <laughs> Is an amazing and it, it plays like a new game. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? It plays like a brand If that new comes game. to Game Pass, I'll definitely check it out. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's definitely, just, definitely. It's just Game Pass offers one, such right? an amazing value for money. It's yeah. hard to just it wasn't buy a leak. actually buying games. <laughs> uh, there was a leak about it, but uh, it's skeptical. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that'd be cool if they could do it. Uh, it's really cheap now, though. It's really cheap. Resi mm. 2 remake. Yeah. It's, it's it's dropped in price quite dramatically. Oh wow. Um, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Uh, seen it for mm. under twenty. I might check that out. Sure. Mm. Really? Right. Uh, so moving on swiftly, then this podcast is brought to you by nxtech.co.uk. Uh, so you can go there for all your gaming and tech needs. You know, they sell obviously Xbox. They sell all the. Uh, console platforms right um you've got uh P pc accessories uh different technology you've got laptops and uh <clears throat> so right now on there uh i thought this was a really good deal you can get the xbox one all digital edition um the microsoft's you know discless xbox who so just plays di download only games which got a lot of criticism because it came out 200 pounds uh, you're getting it on there for £159 uh, for the Xbox mm. One S, all digital, and you're getting Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Fortnite with it. Um, I think all the uh, new Xboxes come with like a month's Game Pass or, uh, as standard as well. Um, another thing I picked up was Far Cry 5 
It's sixteen pounds forty nine on nhtech.co.uk. Uh, which I thought was a great price for that game. Um, I thought it was pretty good, Far Cry 5. Um, it's maybe a series that... And I, I've heard that re recently that Ubisoft have kind of put it on ice for a bit, which is good. Uh, they're going to like take a few years to bring it back and, and, and come up with some new stuff. Uh, but if you want to check out, Far Cry 5 is a great game. Um, it just maybe didn't do too much different from like 4 and th 3. Um, I think three is still the best one. Uh, it looks really good mm. on back to back on you know on Xbox One as well. By the way, it hasn't had exit ads, but still looks really good. Um, then cool. this one was really interesting. The Fallout uh, Pit Boy construction kit is now it says it's normally 150 quid. You're getting it for 75 pound. Um, and it looks it looks really cool. I'd rather than go and having a look at that, uh, even if you just want to go and geek out over here, right? Um, it looks really really cool and a lot of attention to detail in it and that. Um, yeah, yeah. It says seventy four ninety nine normally, hundred forty nine ninety nine uh, over on NX Tech right now. Um, and then. Uh, so lastly, this just literally uh, came across my desk, uh, <laughs> literally this morning. So uh, I've got a, a, an email from Lauren over in X Tech. So she says, "Morning, I have generated a code for your podcast viewers for five percent off a GoPro Hero Seven, which is this really high quality 4K video camera, right? 4K 60 FPS mm. videos." Uh, so you can do, you know, you can record your videos, you can live stream and all that. Uh, it's standalone, so you can you can do it anywhere. You can do it in real life streaming, you know, outside walking about, or you know, streaming games. Um, so really cool nice. piece of kit. Now you're getting it. It's normally 250 quid because it's quite a high end piece of kit, right? You're getting it for five percent off, 237 pound fifty. Uh, <clears throat> but only if you go on there, right? So you, you go on, you add it to your your cart, um, <clears throat> press checkout, and then at the top there's a drop down. And if you enter our code X Power Pod, all caps, all one word, so X P O W E R P O D, uh, you get that five percent off. So thanks very much to NXX for that, and. Uh, now we're going to dig into some news. We've already touched on uh, some of this stuff, right? So the first thing is that uh, there was a new Studios leak. And looking down the list, do you know how you get that one thing that kind of dismisses the rest? Uh, yes. The one thing that stood out to me was Turtle Rock Studios. So obviously they made uh, Left 4 Dead, right? Uh, I, with Valve I thought they were still. Exclusive. Are they not owned by Valve? Hmm. Did they? Oh, no. no, they maybe, went independent because no, they made they... Evolve themselves, yeah. right? They went in. But the thing That's is, right. they're yeah, sure. now working on a Left 4 Dead spiritual sequel called Back, yeah, Back for Blood. Back for Blood. Yeah, it's. Which it's, is published. It's been by, enough time now. Which is published by Warner Brothers. So that immediately vetoed a, a, an Xbox acquisition for me, the, the fact that they're working. Yep. Not necessarily, well, because they have acquired studios that has already had publishing deals with other people. So that that being yeah. a game that's uh, brand new, right, it, it, it didn't sit right with me, you know what I mean? But who, who knows? Yeah. You know, we'll see. Anything's possible. So, going down the list then, so we've got a Seal Boo Studios, who made the aforementioned uh, Plague's Tale. Um, mm -hmm. Also, and I think this is a pr pretty highly likely, right? They're currently making Flight Simulator. <laughs> and they've traditionally made... Ah, nice. Not as the main developer, right? But they've been working on a number of Xbox IP over the years. Uh, different genres, so they're a very multifaceted studio, right? Where well, you go from Plague's Tale to Flight Sim, you know, that sounds like a, 
variety they could put out. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's definitely a high possible possibility. Um, yeah. French Studio European as well, which is something I think Microsoft needs. Uh, they kind of need. They've got UK studios, but you know, so a couple of more European ones would be cool. We've yeah, got totally. I O Interactive. Uh, it's obviously Hitman, oh, that's Kane and Lynch, right? Yeah. Interesting, but mm, I don't know. I, th I think they really like the coming away from Square and, and their independence, and I think they've had a lot of success. Yes, there, absolutely. So, they mm, had to fight for that. Exactly, exactly. So I don't know about that. I don't know. Um, mm. Maybe, you know, Microsoft's come in and said, "Hey, you know, you're independent. Moon Studios is independent. They make sorry, right?" They could have come in and yep. said, "We want you to make an exclusive game for us, and we're going to fund development for you. You just go and make it the best mm. you can." You know, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I mean, I quite like Kane and Lynch too, <laughs> you know, and I, I thought it was pretty cool and kind of gritty in that. Yeah. Yeah. Kane and Lynch, that's another, you know, I, I, that's another one that I, that just Something kind of passed that, me you by, know, unfortunately. <laughs> let's take that and like reboot it, you know what I mean? Who knows? Mm. Who knows? I mean, Hitman's quite <laughs> successful for them, so they probably want to do a Hitman. Thing, yeah, right? have you... Did you did you play uh, I, Hitman one or two? Not I, the I, not the original originals, the more recent I ones. I did. I played. Yeah, I picked up um, Halo. It, Halo. Hitman two, uh, the most recent one, which also came with Hitman one. Uh, it came with all the hmm. maps from Hitman one, and then they just added new ones and a new story. Right. Really cool deal. Yeah. That they did for that. Um, now, I don't think. Two is episodic. The first one was, but I think two is just one product, right? Um, yeah, that was what was really yeah. interesting about Hitman One. Obviously, they they you know having releasing it episodically, um, and eventually releasing the first episode for free. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I I got so much out of that first free episode in Paris. Uh, I got there, there's so much gameplay there. I got hours and hours of gameplay out of just that one episode. Um, yeah. I didn't feel the need to actually buy the rest of the product, mm, mm, and mm. I felt like I got on everything totally. I needed to out of the game totally. just just by that and one thing. That and I think good, that's why they moved away um, from good, that um, model. Yeah, yeah, good from our perspective, you know, because as I said, you mm. can take what you need from it, right? Um, is yeah, it, isn't. The first Hitman on Game Pass, I think it is actually the, the first, uh, the first yes, reboot, is, yeah. the first reboot. Um, I liked Absolution as well. Um, it's not one of my favourites as such, but yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it for something a bit different. I'm not, as I said before, I'm not, I'm not really into stealth and all that, but I thought Hit Hitman's really cool, like all the different ways yeah. that you can assassinate people and that. It's kind of like a puzzle game. Yes, it's, it's a puzzle awesome. game. It is absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I enjoyed it. Um, mm. So, uh, moving on. Platinum Games. No. <laughs> they they That's just an signed a deal one. with Tencent. Uh, so that was another one. I was like, no, no. Yeah, no. They were in so that seems were, pretty unlikely to And me. this is confirmed. They were in talks last year with Platinum. Last year, yeah. Microsoft went and they were in advanced talks. Um, and well, they've not well, really know, said yay or nay on that. The market or... that there's there's a big corner of the market that Microsoft hasn't really nailed, and that's mm. Japan. Um, and and yeah, they don't really totally, have a lot of Japanese totally. developers making but, games for the platform, you know. So um, I can see it's not surprising mm, that they're in talks with them to at least like, expand their relationship. Totally, um, but like seeing people popping off with like from software, right? Which, I don't know. I, I don't know. They, they're independent. Well, they're not independent. The games are published by different people. But, you know, uh, um, I don't really... Um, I don't know. Like, something smaller, right? Like, one uh, I, I thought, and I thought it would be really cool because I'm a fan, is... Uh, you, do you know Sweary? Uh, Sweary 51? No, I don't. Um, well, 
he made like games like uh, Dark Dreams Don't Die. No. Uh, you know, Deadly no, Premonition. No, the name does ring a bell, actually. Yeah. Deadly yeah, Premonition. Sure. All these cult yes. classic games, right? I really like, and they're, they're really quirky, very Japanese. Um, yeah, I think I think D four is on um, on Game Pass as well. I mean, I think it uh, mm. possibly Deadly Premonition. I think it's back compact, possibly on Game Pass. Um, but yeah, but, but his new studio he's got uh, is is it White Owls? Yeah, I think it's White Owls Studios. Um, and they're making a game called The Good Life, with where you play as a dog. All right. Um, not a lot shown on oh, it so yeah, far, that so that's a bell. yeah, this kind of adventure game you play as a dog, right? And it that's, immediately, that's cool. I played that. something he's making immediately has me interested because he has all these. Oh, oh no, no, I'm I'm, I'm sometimes getting mixed up with Suda, which is Suda from uh, Grasshopper. You know, like Shadows of the Dam, No More Heroes, right? I'm, I'm mixing right. up, but if you think about them, they, they, they kind of share a kind of similar style. Um, very humorous mm. as well. Um, so, yeah, so but they're very small and very cult and very... Um, so I think that would be a more likely uh, thing, mm -hmm. that Microsoft could take them and say, right, we're going to pay for all your development, all that. we're going to build up the studio, flesh it out, but we just want you to go and do what you do, and keep making awesome games, you know? You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I think Microsoft are done for a bit, you know? I think they're done mm -hmm. acquiring studios, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. now they're just mm -hmm. going to be focusing on actually um, making games with the studios they The fruits of the labour, yeah. Just do yeah. that for a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I, kinda I agree. They, they do kind of have infinite money, but they need to. They need to focus. Uh, you know, they spent last year and the year before kind of um, expanding yeah, their teams. Yeah, yeah. Now they need to focus those teams into actually developing products. Um, so yeah. I, I think I, I don't think we'll we'll hear about any actual acquisitions now for a while. Maybe not until cool. the end of the year. Yeah. That's just yeah, my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Kind of agree with you there. Um, I'm just going to rattle through the rest of these and then I'm going to move on real quick, right? So uh, Blue Point sure. Games. Which makes the now there was a rumor a while back that uh, they were going to buy a studio uh, that traditionally works with Sony, right? And then Blue Point came up then, uh, so they make like mm -hmm. the remakes, like Last of Us remake, but well, remaster, uh, Uncharted sure, yeah. remasters, Shadow of the Colossus, right? So they were on about that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, as I say, I'm just going to no. push. Seems through. unlikely. I don't think so. No, uh, this seems like kind of a fan's uh, fandom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Relic yeah. Entertainment. They make uh, the Age of Empires games, so possibly. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. That um, makes sense. And the Farm Fifty One, which I'm blanking on right now. I can't remember what they're. Um, what they are, uh, like most recent Bridge games are. But... Yeah. 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 Um, but we'll see. You know, E3 2020 will be interesting, but I think you're pretty right, you know, spot on that. Uh, yeah, I think they've done now and they just want to focus on, you know, uh, proving their worth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, they just want to get the yeah, games got, out and focus on them. And that's like, like when Xbox they, says they're not doing VR. I was like, I think that's the right move for them. They really need to focus on this yeah. first party, get the Series X out, and then look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing streaming instead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they yeah. they they can't mm, they can't totally. put a lot of money and people and it works on really everything. Well, you know, well. they have to they have to pick. Yeah. Xcloud works fantastically well as well. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, because I don't have an Android phone. I've not been able to try it myself. Yeah. I've been yeah, I've been yeah, streaming yeah. inside my home using third-party software for mm. about a year now, and it, it works brilliantly with the Xbox One X. It works mm. absolutely brilliantly. Um. So yeah, I'm looking forward to them expanding that to iPhone. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's see. We already talked about a couple of these uh, news stories right through the show, but um. 
we're just uh, moving along. Uh, what we got? Oh, right. We really quick, right? Because uh, we've got we've gone on a little a little over long. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy 15 and Wolf of Song Youngblood uh, on. I, I put coming to Game Pass, right? They're now on there, right? They're now. on today. Or yesterday. On, yep. Yesterday, yeah. Yep. 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 And it's the morning. Royal Edition as well. Uh, yes, you it get is. All yeah, the DLC, I all of 15. that. I bought it on Didn't Stadia, it. actually. I bought it on Stadia, not yeah. got around. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's on there on Game Pass as well, uh, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. Touch on really quick, like the Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, it was, it's come up. Because yeah, it's been I, delayed I, want, I really a month. want that to come to Xbox. Uh, the, the exclusivity is a year, right? Uh, yeah, so and they've not said what other platforms it's coming to. Obviously, it will come well, to Xbox, no, the, but the, the, I'm They came eager out and that. said uh, that it's coming out on the Xbox in oh, April, cool. April 2021. Because, like, the contract, I can only assume, will be for a year from release, right? So, because it's been delayed yes, to April I on PS. So. But it's kind of sucky that we have to, but... Yeah, I'll be I'll, I'll be waiting for it on the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, I never played the original, yeah. but this uh, it's one that I've heard so many good things about. People reference all the time. Tim Gettys talks about first. it quite often, and uh, uh, yeah, I yeah, really want to play it. Yeah, well, it was one of the first Japanese role-playing games I played, uh, and it got me definitely yeah. into the genre. It did a lot of things that That's we cool. were talking about, right? That. Uh, um, 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 like, like innovation in, in in the JRPG, um, and what it can mean, and brought it to a more mainstream audience, right? Uh, so yeah, this mm. game looks on the levels of the Resi 2 remake, fully remade. Yeah, it looks incredible. Uh, so yeah, it looks very very cool. Really quickly, so uh, move along. Uh, just a quick one then. Uh, so Rod Ferguson. Uh, the studio head at Gears of War uh, Coalition. Uh, he's just left to join uh, the Diablo team at Blizzard. Uh, so ah, yes. I saw that. So, uh, a fun farewell and best of luck to him. Um, I can't wait to see w what he does over there. Uh, he'll obviously be sorely missed at the Coalition, but you know they've got an awesome team over there and I'm sure they'll be able to you know, carry the torch on. Because uh, Rod, I think, 15 sure. years he's been working on Gears of War. So, yeah, Gears 5. Wow. Uh, have you played Gears 5 yet? Uh... Uh, yes, finished that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. I wasn't I the strongest of the series, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was good fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then um, a, a little uh, recommended reading I've picked up. Uh, going back to Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Uh, this comes from Joel Shockers. It was Josh Starr over there. Um, and he's come up with uh, an editorial. It says, Ori and the Will of the Wisps has me ready to buy some tissues. And then he goes on to talk about <laughs> uh, six years ago at E3 2014, we were first introduced to Ori, the beautiful forest of Nibble. Um, the original tra trailer for Ori in the Blind Forest perfectly foreshadowed the game's emotional tone. It was clear from Naru's loving relationship with Ori, Calico for divine composition and a few platforming segments presented in the trailer that Ori in the Blind Forest was going to be a special game. Exactly five years later, on March 11, 2020, Moo Studios will be looking to repeat their success with Ori and the Will of the Wisps. That's my best final releases. <laughs> really? Oh well. Yep. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> <a> good day. <laughs> Happy birthday from Xbox. Um, yeah, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he goes on to talk about the first game, and I say I, I've just finished it again. It's amazing. It looks incredible. The the art in that game is just spectacular. <laughs> Excuse me. And the music. He goes on <coughs> that. Um, he still regularly listens to the soundtrack while reading, writing, on trying to sleep. And yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'll throw it on, <laughs> you know, um, when I'm doing stuff, and it's just beautiful. 
just absolutely it's very relaxed yeah it's a it's a lovely <laughs> game yeah yep yep <clears throat> so that's it if you want to read the rest of it uh, i'd recommend checking it out um so thanks very much ryan for joining us today um my pleasure thanks for having me yeah 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 so um yeah just gonna wrap that up guys uh hope you enjoyed watching uh if you did wherever you're getting this live on mixer.com slash big underscore angry underscore dad 82 uh follow over there would be super appreciated and if you're catching it on youtube uh please consider subscribing and liking because it really helps us out uh really really does uh you can also find the rest of our content over on facebook.com slash hidden gems games media uh where we have our main page there and then we have a bunch of um, groups we have our community hub we've got one for like retro gaming where we do some retro streams over there uh we've got um toys and collectibles we've got our racing game group so yeah go and check all that out you can find me on twitter at big underscore angry underscore dad 82 uh, so once again ryan thanks thanks for joining me today and uh you're very welcome you have, uh, thanks for having me had a good time i hope, I hope you have uh, a lovely the rest of your day <laughs> thank you you too mate you take care all right yeah take care mate all right thanks for watching guys bye bye now. Now. bye bye, bye everyone